Welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for this second in our in our webinar series. And um, yeah, some some housekeeping before we start. So please go on mute um, and just to minimise background noise because there's going to be a lot of people in this meeting. So we want to try and keep that um, you know the clinking of coffee cups and so on to a, to a minimum, please. Um, there will be opportunities to ask questions. Um, if you have questions, please could I ask that you put them in the chat bar um, and the chat bar is located at the top uh, little speech bubble. If you click on that, um, you should be able to ask um, type type a question into the chat and, and I will put that to our panel. Um, so I'd like to start by saying a big thank you. Many people, um, if not all of you, who will have contributed something towards the, the situation with Ukrainian refugees in, in Buckinghamshire, uh, either financially, maybe some of you have taken a, a refugee family into your homes um, or volunteered with a local chat. To start by saying thank you. Um, we will be recording today for those of you that are, uh, uh, for, for people that were unable to attend. Um, so just, just to let you know that um, this session will be, will be recorded. Um, the format for today, we have three uh, fantastic speakers who are, are deeply embedded into, into the work of um, supporting local uh, Ukrainian refugees in Buckinghamshire. Um, we have Deborah Stevens, who is the Head of Asylum and Migration at uh, uh, Homes for Ukraine at Buckinghamshire Council, uh, which is fantastic. Welcome, Deborah. We have uh, Tanya Orlova, who is a Community uh, Support Project Manager at uh, Community Impact Bucks, a local charity and uh, a Ukrainian national herself. So that's fantastic to get that perspective um, on, on life in Bucks. And we also have Adam Townsend, who's the uh, manager at Aylesbury Vineyard, a uh, charity that we have supported uh, through Heart of Bucks um, to do some of the work with, with local Ukrainian refugees. So a really broad um, range of experiences and um, a knowledge, a deep knowledge base, I think, in the, in the subject matter. Um, so I think without further ado, we will we will kick off um, and I will say um, a big welcome to Deborah Stevens uh, as our uh, main speaker today. So um, Debs, when you're ready, please, please carry on. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. And good morning, everyone. Um, my apologies. I've woken up with a head cold, so I'm sorry if I sound really nasally while I'm going through my presentation. Um, so I'm just going to share some slides with you. Uh, hopefully those have all shared OK. Um, so as Henry said, I'm the head of asylum and migration at the council. I look after the Homes for Ukraine, um, part of that team. And Kim Parfit, who some of you may know, looks after the other asylum seekers and refugees that we have in Buckinghamshire. So there's two of us that um, work across this and I have a, a large team working with me, some of whom you might have already met um, through the various areas. Um, so, <clears throat> just a quick overview. It feels like a long time ago, but um, kind of this time last year, we were just starting to talk about um, the potential war in Ukraine and the, the visa scheme started in March. So there are two schemes, the Family Visa Scheme and the Homes for Ukraine Scheme. The Family Visa Scheme is private. Um, so family members can bring uh, Ukrainian family members over on a three year visa, but we don't get any information about this scheme. So we do know that we have Ukrainians living in Bucks on the family visa scheme and um, certainly they attend a lot of the community events. So I know that um, they definitely attend Adam's things over at the vineyard um, and other community groups as well. But we don't have any information about them and don't support them directly unless we come across um, those families. And then the Homes for Ukraine scheme is the national sponsor scheme. Uh, so we have a responsibility to administer funding and support for this scheme, but it is very much led by the sponsors. So at the moment we have over 1500 Ukrainians in Bucks um, and we still have around 350 to 400 who have matched with sponsors but have not yet arrived. We do still have Ukrainians arriving. So there was, of course, a really big um, a number of arrivals at the beginning, back in sort of uh, March, April, May, June time, and that has tapered off. But we are still seeing maybe 30 to 40 arrivals a month um, into sponsor households. 
So the public sign up to host um, the way that the scheme is set up is that anybody can sign up and, and declare that they want to host somebody and they match with a Ukrainian guest. The council does not get involved in that at all. Um, there are some charities that have were doing the matching um, or uh, more recently or kind of uh, as we were going through the scheme where we had um, Ukrainians who were over in the UK, so some of our Ukrainian guests, for example, they would find matches for their friends that were still uh, over in Ukraine. So that's kind of how that works. And then once they've made a match and they've made a joint uh, visa application, it comes through to the council and we provide coordinated support. So we um, do work on checks, housing checks, safeguarding, and also obviously education and providing school places and all of the things that people need to settle in Buckinghamshire. So the support that the council gives, we do a home visit. So um, each sponsor is checked by our environmental health team to make sure that the property won't be overcrowded and make sure that the Ukrainians have adequate living space, separate bedrooms, make sure that, you know, a family of five has not been crammed into one tiny little bedroom and make sure that the property is suitable. We do DBS checks on every adult in the property. So um, that includes the people that live there all the time. But if they have regular visitors or other lodgers, then we would do DBS checks on those as well. We do safeguarding checks for our adults and children's team um, to find out if families are known to the council. And that goes both ways. We also look to see whether um, it's suitable for sponsors to take on hosting, as well as whether it's suitable for Ukrainians to go into that property. Um, school admissions support. So this has been a massive piece of work for the council. We were already running at um, quite uh, high capacity numbers of our schools. And we've obviously had, I think it's about 650 Ukrainian children who have come into Buckinghamshire who have needed a school place. Um, so we provide school admissions support and also home to school transport. Um, but the home to school transport policy follows the same policy uh, that is available for the rest of our residents in Buckinghamshire. Um, and so one of the things I'll talk about later is um, transport, uh, bus passes, those types of things has been something that we've really utilised this fund for, uh, because Buckinghamshire obviously being quite rural, it's quite difficult for our Ukrainians to get around. So we pay a monthly thank you payment to sponsors that's set at £350, which is an amount set by the government. You may have seen just before Christmas that that go, is going up to £500 for sponsors who are continuing to sponsor um, past a guest one year date. So that doesn't mean that the sponsor has to have had the same guest for that full year. But if a guest has been here for a year and they're still in a sponsorship arrangement, then the thank you payment goes up to £500. This month as well, we have also introduced some additional top ups to the thank you payment. So we're now paying £150 for sponsors who have one to three guests, £300 for sponsors who have four to five guests and £450 for um, sponsors who have more than six guests, of which we do actually have some across Buckinghamshire um, with those high numbers. That's on top of the monthly thank you payment and is um, thinking about that cost of living uh, crisis that we're in and the fact that it's really expensive and the energy bills have gone up and the electricity bills have gone up and, and all of those things. Um, and the reason we've split it across three different numbers is because we know that finding properties for Ukrainians, um, for families over four, in Buckinghamshire is quite difficult. So actually we want to um, keep those families in sponsorship for as long as we can. Um, so each sponsor is assigned a liaison officer from the council. Uh, Originally, they were people from across the whole council. We had 150 volunteers from um, our entire staff uh, network who stepped up to be a liaison officer on top of their day job, um, providing lots of signposting for benefits, employments if they came across it, um, things like the funding, and just being there as a person to answer a question. What we found is that sponsors and guests alike, they come up against um, issues with things to do with the government, so their biometric residency permits or um, kind of understanding how to bring their car in and what driving licence they need. And our team have been um, putting together lots of answers on that and trying to really support with everything and anything that we can come up with and leaning on our partners where we know. So um, like BBF, for example, we talk to them about the employment side of things and their skills. We work really closely with DWP, um, who are obviously providing universal credit. We've partnered with Heart of Bucks for the Crisis Fund, uh, which is why we're here talking today. So I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. 
Um, and some of the um, additional support packages, our community boards have also been working in their localities and um, providing funding. So we've recently funded a really interesting scheme uh, with a charity called Stephen Spender Trust, which provides um, support to children, uh, refugee children in schools, working through kind of arts and poetry to give them um, a way of uh, expressing themselves um, through, through those types of things. Our adult learning team expanded their offer. So um, originally they were only really offering face to face sessions in Aylesbury um, and High Wycombe. Uh, and they opened up their English language courses to 11 venues and they also have an online offer. Um, I think at the last count they were providing 70 sessions a week over uh, English language and um, there was it's been a really good take up. But we also have some community groups have set up their own conversational um, sessions. So um, providing an add on to the adult learning, either um, as a chance for them to just practice their conversation or fill in forms that they've got to fill in. Or for some of our more remote communities, they've set up their own English language sessions where the um, guests can't easily get out to uh, different places. The Holiday Activity Fund was also running, so uh, we'll be running some more during Easter. So this providing um, childcare, free childcare for Ukrainian families, giving them access to uh, things for the children to do over the holidays. We've had employment and jobs fairs and we've had some amazing support from businesses. So when um, the entertainer gave us a load of toy vouchers when um, a lot of our guests first arrived, so we were able to give families toy vouchers so that they could go and buy toys for the children, which was really lovely. Oh, sorry. Um, so communication wise has obviously been really important. We have a welcome pack for our sponsors and translator version for guests. This this um, goes through all the different things that people might need to do when they arrive in Buckinghamshire. And I don't think any of us who are native uh, to the UK quite realised how many different things you have to sign up to and register and just how many different bits of information and different websites there are to access all of this. So we do have our web pages. We've got the Helping Hand for Ukraine section that goes through all of that information and provides links through to all of the different parts um, that people need information from. We have a dedicated mailbox. So if you've ever got any questions about uh, the programme, anything that the council's doing, our Ukraine support mailbox is um, monitored all the time. And we also provide bank holiday cover for that um, because obviously uh, our Ukrainians need support all the time, not just during Monday to Friday. And we have an online directory um, which runs uh, as activities for wider groups, but we have a Ukrainian section on there. We've been doing sponsor and guest newsletters. So um, more recently, we've been sending newsletters out with the housing options, which I'll talk about in a second. And we also attend community group sessions to do drop ins, um, provide kind of a bit of a surgery session or wider presentations about housing. We go to community board meetings, we present at parish clerk meetings. So trying to get out there and, and meet. Um, everybody. So the way that we work um, with our sponsors and guests is that we are using the community board geography. So the council has split Buckinghamshire into 16 community board areas um, and each of those areas has an area lead. So a, a full time person that works within my team who um, is that go to person for that area. They hold more than one. Um, they uh, all have more than one area, but they get to know the community groups, they get to know the kind of movers and shakers, the councillors in those areas, the um, community advocates, all of those different things. So you can see from this map that's on the um, PowerPoint at the moment, this is a heat map in terms of the number of sponsors. Um, unsurprisingly, we have a lot of people putting themselves forward in the south of the county, Marlow area in particular. Um, generally, uh, this was kind of also across Beaconsfield, Dedham, Gerrard's Cross, um, Amersham, across the beaches because gross generalisation, but people generally had a couple of extra rooms that they were able to spare to bring Ukrainian uh, refugees in. This has caused quite a lot of challenges going forward because those are also very expensive parts of Buckinghamshire to live in. So as our Ukrainian guests have come in, they've settled, their children have got to school, they're feeling like they've, they're part of a community. Now that they are ready to move on and be more independent, it's a real challenge for them to find accommodation in those parts of the county um, where we know that it's very expensive. We have the kind of offshoot of London, people 
move out of London and pay £2,000 for a two bed flat that they would have paid for, you know, a broom covered in London. And it pushes the prices up. We're also in a very difficult market um, with private rental where um, flats are going really quickly and houses are going really quickly. And if you're not ready to sign up there and then kind of sign on the dotted line there and then, then it's really difficult to find move on accommodation. So the post sponsorship options, apologies if this is really tiny writing, but um, we do have options for our guests so they can extend with their sponsor um, and they can move into rematching. So we've been doing a lot of work to bring more rematching sponsors on board. So these are people who haven't sponsored yet, but they wanted to get involved and they will take um, a family who are already in the UK. These have been quite successful because people get to meet each other before they come. So the original sponsorship, the first time that these families have met in person was pretty much at the airport when they were picking their Ukrainian guests up and taking them back to their home. But with rematching, we're able to um, allow both sides to meet each other before they kind of sign up to say that that's where they're going. Private rental is obviously an option. Um, our guests are really keen to be independent. There are a lot of challenges. Um, our guests don't have a credit. Uh, background in the UK so um, it's really difficult for them to pass a credit check and therefore um, a lot of guests are being asked for either six months of rent up front or a one-year guarantor. We are in the process at the council of just looking at how we can use our tariff funding that we get for the Ukrainians to provide a guarantor scheme um, to help uh, our Ukrainians into uh, rental because th it is a real struggle. We also have social housing, um, so all of our guests are eligible to register for Bucks Home Choice. The, um, the government have been really clear that guests on Bucks Home Choice are treated exactly the same way as all of our other um, residents who are on the register. However, we're able to waive the um, local connection side of it. So Ukrainians local connection is the fact that they matched with somebody in Buckinghamshire. Normally you have to prove several years worth of local connection to get onto the housing register. Um, we are finding people going into social housing but again the challenge is there's a lot more social housing available in the north of the county and um, there's been a significant amount of development um, in the Ellsbury Vale, Old Ellsbury Vale area and not so much in the south which means the, the properties just don't come up as often um, and we're seeing a lot of people migrating towards High Wycombe who are currently in um, a lot of the towns in the south because it's a bit cheaper but there just isn't the properties coming up there. Um, and then we also have an option where sponsors can choose to become a landlord through rent a room scheme um, and we're pushing that with some sponsors who are quite happy to keep the guests but they want to formalise the arrangement a little bit so we're supporting them in terms of setting up tenancies. Um, so the helping hands, uh, right at the beginning we identified that it would be really great to have um, an opportunity for people to be able to support the Ukrainians uh, wider than what the council can do. So obviously we've worked with Heart of Bucks on this. So things that we've supported, bus passes. Maria must have given uh, approved so many applications for bus passes, but it's really tough for our guests to get around the, um, the county and we weren't able to provide funding for bus passes. And actually this has been a real lifeline for a lot of our guests. They've been able to get to language um, sessions. They've been able to get to job interviews. For some of our over 16 year old children, they're able to get to school while their families get on their feet. They get their universal credit in place and, you know, they kind of get themselves set up and um, and then able to fund that going forward. Uh, we funded laptops. So, um, again, that's supporting those people that have come over with nothing and they need laptops and able to access work and uh, education. Driving lessons. So, um, our Ukrainian guests with their driving license, they can only exchange it for an automatic driving license over here. Um, so if they want to drive manual, which is obviously a bit cheaper, they need to go through driving lessons. So we've been funding batches of driving lessons for them. Winter clothes is another one. Um, so as we came into the winter, a lot of our guests came over in the summer, so didn't necessarily have all of the winter clothes that they necessarily wanted. So we've been funding those. Wi-Fi routers um, for when people have moved into their own property school uniforms for children where it's not provided by the school um, to help them fit in or things like school shoes so that they um, you know have nice shiny new shoes so that they don't feel um, like they're standing out. Printers again to help people with their job applications. Um, childcare 
I couldn't quite think of a picture for that one, but um, some childcare or access to um, after school clubs that uh, maybe have a charge against them that the families can't afford or they're waiting for their funding to come through. And also things like bike helmets and um, safety equipment for using bicycles. So again, a lot of this is around that getting the ability to get around Buckinghamshire. So just a couple of um, quotes uh, on here that's really lovely. So we we uh, refunded somebody for a fridge freezer in their property. They'd moved into a private rental um, and they had quite a lot of things that they needed to get because obviously they literally had a suitcase and um, they were so pleased to be able to get a refund for the fridge freezer um, and were able to, you know, get make themselves feel at home. Um, and then a couple of other ones in there as well. So it's a bit of a whistle stop to Henry. Perfect. So I don't know. That Thank you so much, Liz. That was really interesting and really useful to have that sort of very high level understanding and awareness of all of the different activity that uh, the council has become responsible for delivering in uh, a very short space of time and, uh, you know, having to sort of get it, bring a new team in and an upskill. Um, I'm going to pause for questions at this point. If anyone has a question, just a reminder, please uh, click the chat function and type your uh, your question into the chat bar and I'll, I'll relay it to the to the presenters so i'm going to ask you a quick question just while yeah, everyone's thinking um you know you've got this high level over overview you're really seeing every issue every problem every challenge and all the good stuff as well what is your biggest challenge as you know in your role trying to put all this together what's the sort of thing that um keeps you up at night in terms of you know the future so i think there's probably two two things one of them is the um housing the the post sponsorship housing is a real challenge and supporting our guests to be independent which is what they so desperately want to do um whilst trying not to provide even more disruption to their lives so for example their children who have settled in school they don't want to move school again and the reality is some of them are going to have to and that's a really difficult um thing for us to work on because we feel that yeah we just desperately don't want to put even more disruption in so that's kind of on the ground a lot of my team are definitely feeling that i think for me it's the we've only had one set of funding so the government have been really clear with us we've had the ten and a half thousand pounds per refugee um, which they've just cut to five, five and a half um, from Janu from people arriving from January. And our guests are here for three years. So somehow I've got to look at how we can make that funding stretch to provide that support over that three year period. Um, and we've got unaccompanied minors over here. So we've got people in private fostering arrangements, which obviously will need um, ongoing support. There's all the support to the schools who have taken on extra pupils. And so I think funding from my point of view is probably one of my worries just because there's so much to support and I don't want us to get to a point where we suddenly say sorry we can't help you anymore yeah I mean when you start unpicking it like that it, it just shows you how wide and you know the too expansive the, the challenges are thank you I've got a question in the chat for you Debs mm -hmm. from uh, Nate um, are the Ukrainian guests allowed to work in the UK yes so the Ukrainian guests have the three year visa, which allows them to work um, and have access to all of our um, public services. Uh, what it might come up in some of our other groups, so um, our other refugee groups, so Afghans have the right to work as well, but our um, asylum seekers in hotels, they don't have the right to work. So, um, but, so some of the refugees don't, but yes, Ukrainians do. Perfect, thank you. And that I think, unless there's any more questions going into the chat, which I can't see, is a really nice segue into uh, the introduction for uh, Tanya, um, who is a Ukrainian uh, working in, in Buckinghamshire. So um, thank you very much, Debs. Um, Tanya, if I can introduce you, um, you are the Community Support Manager at, uh, at Community Impact Bucks, which is a local charity that we work with very closely at Heart of Bucks. So um, Tanya, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And the floor is yours. Um, hey everybody, um, I want to introduce myself a little more. Uh, yes, uh, my name is Tanya Orlova and uh, I'm a refugee myself and I'm, uh, my, my speech will be a little bit more emotional maybe uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm getting through all these challenges uh, 
and all the things that are uh, that uh, refugees are through. And I would like to share with you uh, my uh, presentation. So, uh, yeah, um, and uh, by introducing, um, I want to tell you uh, a few things about myself, right? But it's uh, a portrait of a person, average person in uh, Buckinghamshire, let's uh, put it this way. So I came here approximately nine years, uh, nine months ago with my uh, child. Uh, he visits a school with my mom. So. I'm representing three generations and I see all the uh, problems and challenges they have. Um, uh, I had my very settled life uh, back in Ukraine. Uh, my son was visiting one of the best schools in Ukraine, like 200 meters from President House. We had a nice flat. Uh, I had my own business uh, and uh, good income and enough time to, uh, you know, to have my other interests, like my interest in psychology and neuroscience. I was finishing my uh, study as a clinical psychologist. I was delivering uh, seminars, workshops uh, about stress, brain, about mindfulness. I'm doing my mindfulness exercises uh, uh, every day, even now. And back in Kiev, I did. I had enough uh, physical activity. So, you know, I really had a very uh, nice, uh, settled life there. And uh, uh, February 24, uh, what happens uh, like this, I just lose my identity. I lose everything that I had uh, behind, right? And I have to start my uh, life from the scratch. Uh, everything I had before actually doesn't matter, right? And I have to try to learn how it works. And, uh, uh, you know, here I want to show you this graph, uh, which shows where most of Ukrainians are at the moment. We are all under constant uh, enormous stress all the time. No holidays, no breaks for like all, almost one year. Uh, and uh, it's really um, important for us all the support that we can find uh, and uh, um, especially uh, support from um, you know things like for example if you take a, a Maslow uh, pyramid you have this hier hierarchy yeah you have this housing things where to live what to eat uh, this one and then um, like mental health uh, support is extremely important so when you come to a a uh, new reality, right? You uh, start from the scratch. You really need your communication to sort of bring back your identity. You have to uh, to uh, talk to people, talk to community, see where you are, and sort of double check it with uh, who you are. You are constantly asking yourself, who am I? Where am I? What am I doing? Why am I doing? Right? So uh, for my role, uh, in uh, community impact box, I'm a member of uh, certain different water groups in uh, uh, which are created by Ukrainians for Ukrainians in a different location uh, scattered uh, on uh, Buckinghamshire County. Three telegram groups we've created in the community impact box uh, group, uh, Facebook group, what's on for Ukrainians in Buckinghamshire, where everybody can share. Um, uh, any news, any uh, supportive information, and I'm inviting you, if you are still not there, to um, to be a part of it. Uh, then, you know, a very important thing, for example, for me, and it, it's very wise to, to have and to organize from a uh, British side, is uh, this coffee mornings, for example, where we, Ukrainian, can come and we can talk to each other and we can see people that like we are, right? Like have a same sort of problem and we, we can sort of, you know, say, okay, we are fine. That's fine. It's not just me, right? It's it's the situation like this. And at the same time here in this social events, there are 
British people that are saying, we are here to help you. We are here to support you. We are here to support you with, you know, like English classes with uh, uh, bicycles, for example, like sometimes very simple things, sometimes very essential things, but it all uh, bring together and it all helps enormously. Uh, then online events are, I will speak about it a little bit further, um, um, are extremely important for Ukrainians. I'm getting all these feedbacks from uh, Ukrainian groups, from um, uh, community uh, coordinators. Uh, in uh, um, As a part of community in Bagbax, what we are doing, we are putting information with all kinds of resources for Ukrainians, hosting community groups. You can find, for example, uh, uh, to, to uh, or, well, many documents and also the document about free um, uh, resources to learn English, free resources uh, to have uh, mental health support in Ukrainian for Ukrainians, also in English. Um, I'm visiting uh, all kinds of um, all kind of events uh, to see uh, how things are going. I'm uh, uh, visiting existing and new groups, and uh, we have this service um, in community in Bug Bugs where you can, uh, uh, you, if you need uh, an interpreter, you are Ukrainian, yeah, and you need it to uh, help to fill in the forms to to help organize an event, for example, English classes. Uh, how you explain <laughs> to people who don't speak English things in English, right? You need an interpreter. So you are also, if you need, you are very uh, welcome to use this service. Um, now I want to speak a little bit about uh, top needs and gaps uh, that Ukrainian refugee have and that they are facing. Um, I can see it uh, from different sources. We made a survey. Uh, I can see it from the this uh, Facebook um, group, the reactions, which I'm going to show you. Uh, I can see it from just, you know, uh, having a conversation with my compatriots. Uh, housing, housing needs is the top, even though I believe uh, many Ukrainians uh, are still um, accommodated with their hosts. Still, this is the problem number one in uh, everybody's head. We realize it, and uh, it. Um, I think uh, it's very important to think how can we get through and what can be done in this uh, in this regards. Employment very important. If you don't have money, you don't feel uh, yourself confident. You couldn't do a lot of things. You couldn't go further, and with that level of stress, you know, you feel yourself like uh, you are not enough uh, a good person. So this is really important for Ukrainians. They are really looking for find a good job to feel themselves fine. Um, another thing, English lessons, that's obvious. We need to not just to know the language. It's not the thing that like you are sitting in your own country and you are learning English or any other language and you are cool. Uh, well, here it's about expressing yourself, having this uh, possibility to, 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 you know, to tell what you feel, uh, to uh, integrate into the culture, right? It's just so much more than just learning uh, English. And um, uh, surprisingly for me, um, in this, uh, in one of uh, uh, survey we've done, uh, people are really interested in uh, like um, adult learning uh, in higher education. Uh, and it's as important as having English classes. I see it as like, you know, um, same thing as employment, right? They want, uh, again, bring back their identity because uh, what happens now, our uh, diplomas are not recognized, right? If you are a doctor, you could not work as a doctor here. If you used to be a lawyer, uh, you are nobody here. Maybe you can find a, a job in a shop, right? Uh, maybe as a manager assistant somewhere, then that would be really great. Uh, if you are, uh, and, and so on, okay, I will not uh, say, it. I, I'm sure you can follow the uh, idea. Other serious top needs, 
which are not mentioned in the service, which are not uh, spoken so much, but they really exist, is mental health, is leisure and physical activities, and uh, later I'll show you why, and mediation. Sometimes, you know, we have this uh, big uh, gap, uh, difference in uh, culture. We don't really always understand uh, uh, how things work, uh, what people mean when they say certain things, we have different ways of expressing our, uh, um, ourselves. Uh, so about getting in, uh, engaged, I told you that uh, this was on for Ukrainians in Bakhmutia group, which is now a little more than uh, 425 members. Um, uh, it's a great source of information and insights to understand uh, what uh, people feel and uh, what are the uh, needs and priorities and gaps. So uh, the average post uh, will take approximately 100 engagement. You know, with a group of 425, it's, it's a good um, involvement. So for um, information like employment, it's really extremely, extremely popular. With things like housing, it's uh, also popular. Maybe you wouldn't see as big uh, involvement uh, on Facebook, but you can see it uh, from uh, other like uh, YouTube and you, we had our um, a webinar about housing with uh, how people are talking, what they are talking about mostly. Then uh, another thing and striking thing for me was a leisure and physical activities, right? You can see uh, here uh, the possibility to have free membership in one of the sports center and then 8,000 uh, people uh, views for um, our walk that being organized with um, with uh, the Wickham Mind and uh, Park Life Initiative. Um, and that's uh, really, why Why is it so? You know that um, sport activities uh, and uh, physical activities is really good to sort of physically drop down the stress of level. Uh, it uh, drops down the level of your cortisol, like literally your uh, your blood, your, your, your body changes by having this. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the important things we have to concentrate on in the future too, to sort of uh, maybe even push a little bit and make sure that Ukrainians have enough uh, opportunity to join and this is affordable, free, uh, this uh, sport activities. Very important thing to be uh, recognized, to be accepted, you know, for our um uh, bringing back our identity. We come here and we we think, am I good again? Who am I, right? Can I can I integrate? And a uh, few activities that have been done are really great. Um, one was uh, prompts in the park where two Ukrainian uh, children were uh, singing their songs. And then uh, you can see here, uh, uh, during the Christmas time, Ukrainians were participating in Christmas um, uh, event in the park. Uh, it was organized also with the uh, help of uh, Marlo Ukraine Collective. And it was uh, in like literally every Ukrainian uh, WhatsApp group. So that was quite popular. Childcare uh, is quite popular. And anything like Ukrainians believe they can build a community where they can get and provide support to each other. That's also a quite a popular thing. And now I want to show you, just uh, uh, tell you a little more about this Prompts in the Park event that been uh, organized. Um, I met this uh, woman who uh, she had uh, two children, Zlata and Sava, and uh, I was looking for people who can, you know, Ukrainians who, who can sing in uh, for this event, Prompts in the Park. It's a big event in Aylesbury. And uh, I was telling her that, and she told me, you know, my children are singing. 
uh, my kids are uh, sinning. And I'm very careful when uh, mom says that, okay, my uh, kids are sinning good, right? Because I'm a mom myself and my kid is a good artist and singer and whatever. Uh, so, but I, of course, I've listened to what she sent me and I was surprised and amazed how good they are. Uh, this lady, their mom, she was really um, sad at the moment I met her. She was depressed. She was exhausted. She didn't want to do anything. She didn't see her future. So she was really broken. And uh, when we started this activity, she started to uh, to get involved with these uh, kids, you know, uh, preparing them to... Uh, to present, to sing, and it was such a success. I mean, people were coming to, uh, at the end, people were coming and saying, thank you so much for these uh, children and to their mom. And other Ukrainians were uh, coming there too, and the uh, Ukrainian community was uh, uh, involved. They made this really nice dance uh, and uh, inviting uh, British people to participate. That was really amazing event and after that uh, the children just recently were seeing uh, for uh, at uh, 10 Downing Street and they are invited now again and again for uh, different um, um, like events. Another important thing that represents what we do you know uh, is uh, housing events and anything uh, uh, what is uh, going about housing. Um, I met this uh, Watson group. I came to what you call coffee morning, even though it was in the evening. And I realized it was uh, the beginning of uh, uh, autumn. I realized that people are really depressed and sad about housing issue. And they are very, uh, they had a very high uh, level of anxiety. So uh, we uh, uh, we were speaking what, what could be done and uh, um, we decided to ask somebody from the council to explain how it works, etc. And Deborah came and was very popular. And I've seen like people were so, uh, it was so therapeutic, you know, for their mental health. They had all the answer. They had up-to-date information. They had opportunity to get the answers. And they had this feeling like, okay, I, I'm not a homeless people, actually. You know, I have hope. I uh, I am supported and it's very important. I invited uh, Deborah to speak for our online uh, event and it was uh, one, I mean, it was the top, the most attended one. And now when we put it on our YouTube uh, canal uh, for Community Impact Box, it, it's the most views is this particular uh, event. So what has been done, as I told, uh, volunteer project, transport, what Deborah already uh, said, it's very important, educational and cultural event, coffee morning is very good, mental health, uh, there are some issues that uh, has been done. Now I want to uh, mention one serious thing uh, that we have to remember about mental health. Um, when you ha you are under such a high level of stress all the time, what happens to you? And you have trauma. Every like Ukrainian is traumatized now, more or less. Uh, then you get what is called learned helplessness. Uh, it doesn't mean that everybody gets that, but uh, you know it's very important right now to give enough support and enough access to resources and make sure people uh, can uh, overcome it, not to get people to that state, because it's really uh, difficult. If, we, if they are there the, in the state of uh, learned helplessness, it's really difficult to uh, get them out of there. And this is a state when you say, OK, I'm tired. I don't know what to do. I need somebody to tell me what to do. I'm not going to try it. Right? And we don't want that. We want people to be active. We want people uh, to really uh, be independent and at the same time to integrate to the uh, British um, society. So what can be done, like if I can speak in, in easy words, in housing, 
I would suggest to support and motivate financially or with benefits any communities, landlords, organization which are involved with helping Ukrainians with housing. With employment and education, I should I would um, focus on uh, supporting to legalize people's diplomas, right? Because they had this history talking about their identity and now they they don't have it right they uh, constantly check it and now they they see that it it doesn't matter here so it's very important as much as we can to do it here uh, to get free intensive english classes for people who doesn't work to have it uh, possible to visit them like uh, at least maybe four uh, times a week to get it really uh, you know fast higher education for adults, um, leisure and physical activities, encourage Ukrainians to have physical and leisure activities to free, uh, for free or more affordable, because that will, will help them to reduce the amount of stress and uh, get them out of this state. Uh, I would suggest to make maybe even uh, more trips where they can change uh, what they see every day and uh, have an opportunity to look at their situation from the, another angle. Mental health, I think we should now focus on, uh, again, uh, allowing Ukrainian professionals who are here to give support to Ukrainians. So uh, this is uh, about it. Thank you very much for your attention. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Tanya. That was a, that was a really um, in-depth, in insightful overview of the life of a of a Ukrainian refugee in in Bucks, and I'm I'm really grateful that you took took the time to to talk about it and um, you know, give it give us that insight into into what your life's been like and what you know the life of uh, many Ukrainian um, refugees has been like in Buckinghamshire. Um, interesting to hear the challenges and the uh, and, and also some of the positive stuff as well. So I'm I'm, I'm really pleased to hear um, about your experience. We're going to go straight into our next speaker. Um, to give you all time to think of questions uh, uh, for Tanya. So again, if you have questions, please pop them in the chat um, and we'll pick them up uh, as a sort of panel discussion immediately afterwards. Adam, if you could give us a, a whistle-stop tour through uh, through your work. Um, uh, so we've got time for a few questions at the end. That'd be great. Thanks, Adam. No problem. Uh, yeah, so as Henry says, uh, I'm Adam Townsend uh, and I manage Elsbury Vineyard Storehouse. Um, it's probably easier if I give you a brief overview of what Storehouse does first, so you can see how it fits in with uh, the Ukraine project. Um, so, mainly a food bank, uh, opens three times a week and we're supporting approximately 150 people a week. Uh, we also have a grow baby facility that provides clothing and equipment for babies, uh, clothing for children, including school uniforms for local schools uh, which has been really helpful for the ukraines uh, we also host a food cycle project which is a community dining project and again uh, the ukraines have, have really taken to that and, and there's quite a few that go to that uh, we also do a soft play once a week uh, for preschool kids um, we also have a play therapist uh, which again has, has fitted in really well with, with the ukraine hub we run uh, we also do a few bits of household goods and furniture for those who, who really need it. Uh, so Storehouse is uh, part of Aylesbury Vineyard Church um, and we're based in an old commercial warehouse in Aylesbury, uh, which gives us an amazing amount of room uh, to, to get all these community activities and services. Uh, so yeah, so back in April last year, we were approached uh, as they were looking for somewhere to host, uh, they were looking for a venue, um, basically for us to host and run a help center for the Ukraine guests arriving in Aylesbury. Uh, so we quickly opened the doors uh, at the beginning of May for our first Ukrainian hub. Uh, and it was quite interesting actually, because what we <laughs> what we thought that uh, they'd want was nothing like what they actually needed. Um, so, for instance, what I had in mind was what we run with with the food bank uh, is that during the week uh, when our clients come to us we have uh, an array of agencies available so Buckinghamshire Council Helping Hands are there, 
Um, there's uh, help with uh, universal credits, there's housing associations, uh, there's all sorts of people there to help them. Uh, but we soon found out that um, even though we did have a couple of translators uh, provided by Community Impact Sparks, um, a few people, a few of the uh, Ukraine guests with really good English, uh, the, the, the barrier was there and it didn't quite work. But what we did find, as Tanya had said, is um, the community uh, that the Ukrainians have meant that they were helping each other. So they were helping each other to open bank accounts, uh, work out the universal credit system, uh, find out how to get the biometric IDs, driving license, everything. They kind of just helped, helped each other with that, which was fine, <laughs> made our life a lot easier. Um, so what we were doing was literally signposting along with the uh, sponsor liaison officers from Buckinghamshire Council uh, that we currently have about four that come down to our Ukraine hub um, and they're there not just for the for the guests but for the hosts as well uh, and between between us we, we can signpost them to, to, to the help they need um, and as has been mentioned several times already, uh, we soon realised that a lot of the Ukrainians have amazing careers, but they don't always transfer over very easily. Uh, but the language was a big issue as well. Um, so we started doing uh, some English lessons with them, which were really basic. They were very short and they were run by volunteers, uh, which was a good start. Um, but we decided that we'd run an intense, uh, a week long intense English lessons. So we hired three English tutors uh, and then, so that ran in the beginning of September. And that was a really good starting block. Um, and they were doing English lessons elsewhere as well. Um, so we, we're still running them now. So this morning, actually, we've got three different lessons running this morning. Uh, but now we're actually using uh, Ukrainians who, who are teachers as well. So, so they're, they're running the lessons now, which is really great. Um, and actually, we found that around 90 to 95 percent of our hub guests are actually attending those lessons, uh, which surprised me at how much that really was. Um, so some of the challenges we've had, uh, we found that while they were, when the guests first arrived in the country, they were still trying to sort out the universal credit. We found a lot of them were actually using our food bank, which we hadn't really expected. Um, and they were... A lot of people, a lot of the guests that are still eligible to use a food bank, and there were some that you're using that shouldn't be. So we now opened up another food bank on Thursday, along with alongside the Ukraine hub that works this afternoon. Um, and again, the housing issue. Uh, so we do furniture and household goods, which is now obviously needed to help the these guests furnish their new places. Um, and we're working with the liaison officers at the moment as to how we can support them with this. Um, the importance of getting funding, obviously, uh, we're, we're a charity running this. Um, and it was quite uh, interesting because what we expected that we were going to do uh, didn't turn out to be that way. So we, we, we had to adapt quite quickly. So, um, just going to plug uh, Heart of Bucks here, of course. But the the it, it was really useful that you know when we decided we needed to do English lessons, that was what was needed. Um, you know, within a couple of days to have that funding, so we could start. Get, we had the equipment to run the English lessons, etc. It was it was just amazing. So, having access to the micro grants that are around there from uh, the likes of Heart of Bucks are vital. Um, because uh, otherwise, you know, if you were applying for normal funding, it takes like two or three months to come through and it just wouldn't have worked really. So um, we're still running the hub and we probably have about 60 or 70 that come through every week. Um, they're all fed. Uh, they usually, as I said, 90% of them are going to English lessons before. There's then a food bank afterwards. Uh, and the um, community liaison officers are around as well to help. So that's pretty much what we do. Um, it's a, a shortened version for you, Henry. <laughs> I hope that helps.
That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Adam. That was a great whistle stop tour of just one of many community projects that um, we've been able to support in in the county and, and particularly focusing on the, the community, uh, the Ukrainian community in Aylesbury. Um, but yeah, great to hear about your work. And I know I've been down to the vineyard and seen um, the fantastic facilities that you have there and the, and the great work that you do. So um, yeah, really useful to have that. Much appreciated. Um, so we're going to come back together now for uh, a sort of last few minutes questions for the panel from um from anyone uh, on the call um so p again please if you have a question or a um, comment please put it in the chat and i'll relay that to the panel um at this point i'll also just introduce maria um who is our crisis funds officer at heart of bucks and has done a, a huge amount of um and, and i do mean a huge amount of work processing um hundreds if not thousands probably of uh of crisis funding applications including our ukrainian crisis fund as well so um if you have any questions about heart of bucks's support in that area i'll be happy to direct them to maria um again while you're thinking of questions i've got a i've got one for tanya if i may um tanya do you what what was your biggest challenge from a from a practical perspective as, as a ukrainian so in terms of engaging with all the different systems, all the different forms, all the different things that you have that you suddenly realised you had to do when you arrived, what was the one that stood out for you as being the most difficult to engage with? Because I think it's interesting to to understand it from that perspective as somebody who's just sort of dropped into the UK. What part of our system was was the most difficult to to deal with? Yeah. So I want to tell you that I was uh, like first month, I was a little bit prepared to fill in all these forms. What I did, like almost all my time, I was filling in the forms for myself, my son and my mom. So I had a little bit, you know, I've been a little bit prepared, but now I'm uh, trying to find a flat. I have, even though I have work, right, I have my salary, uh, I've sent already not less than 150 uh, inquiries. I've uh, looked at uh, approximately 30 different flats and I fill uh, this, uh, what what you call, sorry, short form of 14 uh, pages just to make my offer. So, you know, I am, I'm speaking to other Ukrainians in other countries. They are scattered now, like I have uh, people in 16 different countries. And when I'm telling them that I have to get through about you know documents and everything and how it works here they, they couldn't believe uh, that uh, it's true so housing is for me personally is the biggest issue at the moment great thanks tanya and i think that's a, a really interesting reflection because i i probably would have guessed that i think if you'd asked me to just take a stab at what was most challenging because it was a problem in the uk before you know, yeah. and then we've just had an influx of of people, quite rightly, to, to, to that we need to house and take care of. Um, so I can imagine the housing system is being put under, um, you know, a considerable amount of stress and strain at the moment. Um, I've got a question from Nick uh, that says, one year on, are you finding that financial donations to support the various programmes are dropping off or are the public donations still coming in? I feel like I could probably field that one. So um, there is a... I would say there is a significant amount of donor fatigue across all of the different areas that um, that we that we look at and all of the different fundraising programs that we do. It's kind of been a, a sort of a, a relentless issue, hasn't there? There's been COVID and, and all of the fundraising and the crisis stuff that went on there. Then you've had um, the Afghan refugee uh, situation, then Ukraine cost of living crisis sort of underpinning all of that and all of the other um sort of charitable causes that that thread in amongst that um naturally there is a bit of donor fatigue i think and and but we are still always surprised i think at the generosity of people in buckinghamshire um we're still getting donations to the ukraine uh, appeal um many people contributed you know, we i think we ran one of the most successful if not the most successful um crisis funding appeals in in the in the country uh for for, the, for things like cost of living so um while i think there is elements of donor fatigue starting to creep in um we are still um certainly seeing um donations trickling through absolutely um i've got a question from nate uh 
and and you're welcome says you know thank you for 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 putting this on absolutely brilliant that you've that you've enjoyed it nate um who should we be in touch with uh, to to brainstorm ideas about how to move forward some of our creative ideas and opportunities for help? And I think um, I would suggest Deborah as as having that sort of umbrella view of everything happening in Buckinghamshire. And I think Deborah has just put her email address in the chat. Um, so there you go, perfect. That's sorted. Um, any other final questions for anybody at all um, from the floor? A perfect one from Pippa. Um, a question for Tanya. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. How is your son getting on? Um, has it been easier for Ukrainian guests to integrate and thrive if they have children? Uh, so, um, my Daniel uh, is very social. You know, he loves talking and uh, he loves, uh, you know, giving presents and he's naturally really kind so i wouldn't say that it was very uh, difficult for him i believe that we are visiting a pretty good school year too at the same time i i see well he started to, since the war started of course he started to, uh, biting his uh, nails so i understand that's how he expressed his stress how he's uh, trying to cope with that uh, one of the most important thing for him now is to be to feel accepted, which he doesn't. You know, uh, when I was trying to speak about it with his teacher, uh, she was surprised because you know usually he is naturally very positive and and happy and smiley and you know he doesn't make much troubles. So you wouldn't you wouldn't realize it if you know he wouldn't tell you that directly like he did to my, to me. And I see like sometimes he's crying because of that. And he's really happy to have these uh, meetings with other Ukrainians where there are more than, you know, more people who he can speak the same language and they understand him and he can make jokes. He laughs making jokes. You know, he always trying uh, to, to find a good one. Uh, and so other people can appreciate it, right? So this is one of the biggest problem for for my child, of like, and probably for children of his age. I know there are some other for like people eleven plus, etc. Here, but yeah, but for for my particular case, this is uh, the same. Uh, well, at the same time, I see that a uh, school is trying best you know and just they are taking care about him and they don't uh, push on him too much they understand that uh, english is not his own language so they they, they don't uh, tell him you know that uh, i was surprised uh, by having a meeting with his teacher i was thinking she will tell him that his english is not enough he's not really good in some subjects but uh, uh, she just told, well, he's really trying, you know, he's good in this and that, and look at his uh, uh, things, what uh, has been done. And I was almost crying. I was thinking, oh, my God, that's so good. You know, I see uh, the attitude to my child, and it's so important for me, you know, because, yeah, I'm mom, yeah, and I want my child to be in good hands. So that's about me. Thank you, Tanya. And I think, yeah, it's a, a really important point that, you know, the children are the, uh, you know, the, almost the focus should be, almost be our focus point, right, to to make sure that they are um, looked after and, and, and cared for and welcomed, really, and, and made made to feel that there are, you know, um, you know, people in the world that will will look after them in their their hour of need. And I, and I hope that's how um, you have felt. Tanya and, and 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 the Ukrainians in the in in the UK as well. Apologies, we've gone a little bit over our allocated time. So so thank you everyone for staying on for an extra five minutes. Um, I'm really grateful um, to you for for for, for joining us um, and, uh, and and your questions and, and your engagement and and of course your generosity and 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 giving to to, to I'm sure many of the um, fundraising initiatives that have that have enabled all of this great activity to take place. Um, in Buckinghamshire. 
So I'll I'll pause there and say thank you so much. Great to see you all, and um, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.